Let's start doing some data analysis. We're going to learn how to work with this crime data and create some useful plots to visualize and summarize how the crime looks like in London. Let's run this notebook. We'll run the first few cells. We're going to get some data. This data comes from the website police.uk. They have a really amazing archive of crime data for the entire UK. And they do a pretty good job of kind of sharing all the data, but also anonymizing it and making sure the privacy is preserved. And they are very meticulous in kind of documenting every type of crime. If you want really good crime data, get it from here. I use this as an example in many of my courses and tutorials. We're going to get the data from for year 2020. This come in monthly CSV files. So we say we have this 12 CSV files. We've downloaded this. If you see our data folder, we now have this 12 CSV files that have all the crime in London. And we want to understand this. Let's say we are an analyst and we are asked to you know, produce some analysis on the crime in London. What type of crimes are prevalent? What are, how many total crimes happen? What's the temporal pattern? What's the spatial pattern? And we're going to analyze this. This data is also a spatial data, but we're going to first work with the, the non-spatial aspect of it. So let's just read this data using pandas. We have, we can read this file, say pd.readcsv and read this file using pandas. We have 12 files. Instead of working them separately, let's just merge all of them into a single data frame. The way to do this is using this pandas function called concat, which will take a list of data frames and say, I want to merge all of them into a single data frame. So we iterate through all the files. We use the pandas function pd.readcsv. We'll get a data frame for each of those files. We get a list of them. And finally, we merge them using this pd.concat. I'm going to just display this merged data frame. It took about eight seconds to work with, read this data, merge and concatenate them. This one has over a million rows. It's a very large data set. So you've got a really big data set, which you could just read, merge, and create this using pandas. This is going to be a nightmare if you try to do this in any other desktop-based environment. So pandas is really great in kind of working this large data set. We have the different, you have crime ID, month, and lat long. We have the location, we have the crime type. So first step you want to understand is what are the different crimes? Why there is so much crime in London? The first time I looked at it is like a million crime incidents a year. That seems like a, quite excessive. So let's see, are there all serious crimes or are there kind of petty crimes and et cetera? So we can kind of look at the crime type field and apply some filter to it. We have the function called group by, it says, give me the group by crime type folder, so different kind of crime type, and give me the size, give me the counts of those. So when I run this, this is give me the counts of different type of crimes. So you can see most of the crimes are this antisocial behavior. Like you can give a police to call, my neighbor is playing loud music. So most of the crimes are kind of this petty thing, but again, the police keeps a record of those and they are available in our database. And there are bicycle thefts, et cetera. And you can see there are different crimes available that are here. So this is our kind of group stats in pandas. You can do group by and then do various stats. Size will give you count, mean, median, et cetera, will give you different stats on that. This is a data that we can use in a plot. We can create a pie chart and say, I have want to show this in a pie chart to visualize this. We can use the pandas plot function. If you have a pandas data frame or a pandas, uh, what do you say, series, a pandas series or a pandas data frame, you can call dot plot on that. Let's see what that function looks like. It says, makes plots of a series or a data frame. Default backend is matplotlib. So whatever you want to plot will be sent to matplotlib. This is a higher level function. You don't have to deal with all the coordinates and stuff in, internally. Pandas will do all of that for you. So you can say plot, and then you can give some arguments and some QR arguments. You can give the data, the CDs you want to plot, some labels, kind, what type of plot you want, bar chart, line chart, histogram, box plots, et cetera. And then on what axis do you want to plot this and some many other parameters. Let's create a basic chart first. We first create a subplot. So we create one plot, we get our axis object, get our figure, set the size. And now we say we have this type counts, which is our series here, dot plot, we want a pie chart on this axis. This is why I like creating axis first, so I can choose where the plot goes. So I can always say, put it on this axis, or we'll always have this axis parameter in most functions. So I said this goes on my axis, 
and we can see it. We get a nice plot, right? We get a pie chart that was created by Pandas. How did it create? Well, it went and said, I have this data. It calls the matplotlib function to create this chart. So if I want to customize this further, I have to go and see what options are available in matplotlib. You can see here at the end, it says, at the end, you can specify some keyword arguments that will be passed on to matplotlib. So if I want to customize this chart somehow, I can give some matplotlib options. How do we customize it? Well, first let's just do some basic things. We can just say, I want to set the title. I want to remove the y-axis label. So now we have this time type. I find this also is quite helpful option, tight layout. By default, there's a lot of white space that gets added to matplotlib plots. So if you want to remove those, you can call dot tight layout and we can have this. Let's customize it a bit. To customize it, we want to look at what options are available for matplotlib. So now we go to matplotlib and say, this is how you create a pie chart in matplotlib. You have some data and you have all of these options that we can give. And now we can keep giving those options to our pandas function, which will be passed on to our matplotlib backend. There are two things we can give. One is this called wedge props. Each of this is a wedge of a pie chart and you can customize it to your heart slightly. Like there are so many options to customize it. Let's see how to do this. So we go to our pie chart and say, how do I give the wedge props? So it's a wedge prop is a dictionary of stuff that you want your wedges to look like. So let's say I want to give this or change the line width. So come here and say, I have this and I want to now give some wedge props wedge properties and line width three. I can also change the color. Let me just change the color. So you can see my edges are now thicker and white, and I can give this. This is a now good time to use your AI assistant. So you can say, can you make my pie chart width bigger? And it'll tell you exactly what property to use instead of you going to the documentation and use it. There are also this text labels. You can give some text properties. So this are another parameter called text props, which you can pass on to your matplotlib props. You can say text props, you can, you can customize the fonts and font styles and all of that, that you can want to do it. Text props. And you can see I've changed my labels to be in italics. You can also set your fonts and etc. if you want. So this is how you kind of do some analysis, get the data. Once you have a data, call the plot function on a Pandas data frame or a series. And once you have a basic plot, go and look at the documentation for that particular type of plot and you can customize it. There's also a lot of temporal pattern. We just did it in aggregate. We can explore the temporal pattern since we have data for entire year, month by month. Let's explore this data and create a different kind of chart. We have our data. We say we, have, we can group it by month and give me the monthly counts. So you can see there are crime has a temporal pattern. In winter months, maybe the crime is less. Summer months is more, more people are out and you know, there are more crime incidents. So we can visualize this as a bar chart, same idea, monthly counts, dot plot, kind bar. Previously we did pi, now we can just do bar and we can get some bar chart. And again, I just want to, once you can understand the structure, all of this becomes much easy. Just start your things, take your thing, take your data frame, plot it. And once you have this, now it's easy. This is the hard part. Getting to this point is the hard part. Customizing this is very easy because now there's enough help available through our coding assistant that can help you customize this. We can add multiple type of plots on the same axis. So this is a bar plot. You can say, I want a line plot along with that. So I can now run this and first it'll plot a bar chart. On top of the bar chart, it'll plot a line plot. And you can overlay multiple plots together on the same axis. If you want to plot some labels on this, again, you can say ax dot something and you just plot, keep plotting stuff on the same axis 
and it'll keep the overlay on top of that. One of the interesting patterns that is present in this data is the pattern of bicycle thefts. So let's explore this data, just one special kind of theft that occurs in this data and see if we can plot that. Vikna, you can explain the exercise. So for this exercise, we have this merged data frame, which has all the incidents, but we are filtering the bicycle theft here. So we have this another data frame that we are going to use for plotting this line chart. And you will have to group the result by month first and then try the plot, the line plot the way it shows here. So I will just show you where you can gather these things. So here you see that we have similar things. So you can group it by month and you can use a syntax to plot your line chart. So just try this. You already have the bicycle theft data frame filtered. Group it by month and plot the line chart.